Hello, dear friends. Here we are. This is the countdown. Yes, only eight days away from the 12th U.S. Spirit Symposium. It's unbelievable that we have come this far. We've been together for almost 13 days in this countdown with different friends. And tonight is a special night. And we say special because we are going to dedicate part of this program also to pray together for what's happening in the world right now. We cannot lose sight that there is, you know, um, more than we expected going on around. And for those who are at least a little bit aware of the international uh, status of our world, we understand how critical this day is. The U.S. strikes missiles in Syria. And uh, we're not going to discuss the political point of view because it's not on us as spirit is to do so. But we will pray. We will pray. We will pray and we will ask for your prayers as well. In the 12, the countdown to this beautiful symposium, there is a specific, specific round table that I will be part of it, in which we talk about the balancing of physical and mental health to achieve wellness. And in this beautiful round table discussion, there is the understanding about uh, psychiatric illnesses, mediumship. Many people don't understand what happens at this level. What happens to people when sometimes they get confused if there is mental illness or if it is mediumship. This symposium, there is going to be a roundtable discussion just for that, to discuss that element as well. Uh, our guest tonight needed to reschedule, but that's okay. He's going to be with us on another day. For now, you and I, we have a mission. The mission to break down this mystery. When is mediumship mediumship? And when is mental illness mental illness? Of course, we cannot answer to this question in a few minutes. But we can start unpuzzling the question together. How so? Think about this. Mediumship is when we are feeling and perceiving, as Kardec says in the medium's book, mediums are those who feel the influence of other spirits onto them. Mm -hmm. So if I feel and perceive it and start feeling even physically, I've seen mediums who are thrown on the floor by spirits. And I've, as a medium myself, how many spirited, how many disobsession meetings we channeled spirits that were going through what we call zoanthropy. Yes, you feel just like the spirits. But the fine line of being mentally ill and being a medium comes with awareness and control. Mediumship can be educated. Mental illness needs to be treated. Two different things. Very different. Dramatically different. Educating mediumship first begins first and foremost with self-awareness. My body and myself. I am not the body, though I must control my body. Where does it begin? In childhood. We need to teach our children self-control. The other day, I saw a mother, and I felt sorry for her, not thinking that I'm better than her, no, but I wish I could tell her 
she had like a two-year-old crying like crazy because he wanted the cell phone. And she gave the cell phone to him because he wanted to watch something on it. I understand it. But he threw a tantrum to the point when he saw that the cell phone was off and was not already open for him. He got even worse in his tantrum. That's where we begin teaching self-control in childhood. Picking up the child and caressing the head and saying, everything is okay. I love you. I know you don't like to watch this, but it's not time. Right? It's not time. But when we talk about mediumship in teenagers, children, teenagers, and adults, we need to be reminded that we need to educate this faculty. If it doesn't get to be educated, then it may turn into an imbalance. Why? The fine line between the two. Because if I am not educated in my exchange, mind to mind, Barry spirit to Barry spirit. Kardec explains mediumship is all about the perispiritual connection. And it's mind to mind connection. If I keep on allowing these other minds to talk through me when I'm talking to people in my daily life, not perceiving it, many people are mediums, they don't know it. They feel like I'm moody, I'm bipolar. Maybe they are mediums. We don't want to be simplistic, but it's a possibility. So self-awareness is the first step. The second step, education. That's where the Spiritist books come along. Instruction. And then I get that back to me. And I say, well, next time I'm going to talk to somebody, I'm going to observe first. What I'm feeling. Then I'm going to observe what others are feeling. That's emotional intelligence. And you may be asking, well, Vanessa, is that possible at all? At all? To know what people are feeling according to science? Yes, it is. And even neuroscience. We have an inbuilt system in our nervous system that allows us to capture what we're feeling what others are feeling. So we need to refine the self-awareness and the awareness of others' feeling. The definition of emotional intelligence encompasses the awareness of who we feel, what others feel, know the difference and know what to do and to think regarding that information. So the medium needs to work at that end. Who am I? What do I feel? What, where is this coming from? Sometimes we sit down at a mediumistic table. Sometimes, not every time. Not even knowing which spirits are going to come about. And they come. And we're surprised. We're like, wow. Just to give an example. The other day, a spirit came through a mediumistic meeting and said, that he was quite indignated that people sometimes write the names of others in the book of prayers because in our center we have a book of prayers. People go there and write the names they want us to pray for. And the spirit came and said, you know, the mentors allow me to come here and tell you that people cannot write names of people in this book without praying for them first. And second, they cannot write the names of people willing to banish them from their lives. That's not charitable. And we're not here to do this type of work. Amazing, huh? And we were like, wow. And then we told our community about it. And funny enough, it makes sense because sometimes out of our not knowing nature, 
we go and have such behavior. We ask people. That's all the more important. So back to our discussion regarding mediumship and psychiatric illnesses. Psychiatric illnesses, as science says, they are deeply rooted in our genes. But we spiritists understand that the genes are not the real cause. They are the imprint of the genetic, of the disturbances we've created in the past that are imprinted in our spiritual body, the perispirit, and thus they imprint themselves in our genes. Yes, we, with our spiritual body, when we are to reincarnate, we magnetically attract the gene pool of that susceptibility. Mental illness is also something that we trigger through the environment. The genetic predisposition, as Andrea Lewis says in the book Evolution into Worlds, we are predisposed due to grave mistakes that we've made. And thus we are susceptible. We may trigger the activation of that illness or not according to this life's environment. Conclusion for us, just for that part of it, we need to provide ourselves and our loved ones with a healthier environment. An environment that is healthier, less fast-paced, different from everybody else, of course, because we understand better. Everybody else is in the hush-hush of life. That is not working. We need to pace ourselves out. It's funny, right? Because we are here at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, and you may be asking, of oh, Anissa, is that a paced life? Well. To be here 11 p.m., we had to jiggle a few things off of our schedule to be well at this hour. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. So, we need to make decisions, and we cannot do it all. We shouldn't do it all, because our guide and model didn't do it all. Did he? Was he the CEO of a company, and at the same time, the healing Medium of God on earth? I don't think so. Does it mean that when you're a CEO, you cannot be religious? Oh, yes, you can. And you should. But we're talking about the do it all in our daily lives. Daily life. Trying to squeeze in each and everything in our lives. That can trigger a lot of imbalance per se. Because nothing in nature is fast Everything is gradual, everything is natural, no wonder we see the slow transition of seasons. We don't see a branch that is dry bringing flower the next day. It's a gradual transition, little by little, and after a while we see the sprouting of new leaves, of new flowers, the blooming of flowers and later fruits. So for us tonight, we're just teasing you with a little tiny bit of what will be discussed in this round table. It's probably towards these lines and much more for sure, much more than that. For tonight, we would like to pray as well. For those who are in Syria, you know, think about it, Syria, right? If you Google it, Syria, and I ask you this, uh, if you Google right now, Syria and Damascus, you're going to see that the explosions happened near Damascus. Damascus, for us represents the very city, right, in which Paul of Tarsus shifted his whole life and brought to us the teachings that we know today. 
it's not only for this that we pray. We pray for those who are there and don't have the minimal conditions. We pray for the world. We pray for everyone. Pray that we can be more fraternal, be kinder, be more peacemaker. No words will suffice. We need vibrations, friends. So tonight I'm going to read a little bit of Emmanuel. Emmanuel from the book Living Spring. So we think about the gravity of this moment and our countdown to this meeting that becomes ever more meaningful for us and for the world. More than ever, we need each and every presence coming to the capital of the United States on April 21st, joining forces on this beautiful therapeutic event that promises to be a bridge of relief. As Josara Korngold said when she was here with us, it's the way through which the good and loving spirits can use us to bring relief to those who are wandering and who may be causing a lot of troubles. A lot of the decisions that happen in our world are a byproduct of this interference between the spiritual into the physical and vice versa. So we live in two worlds, literally, and we need to be aware of it and truly conscientious. So that's why as we call you to the symposium and to this prayerful moment, let us read a little bit about chapter 71, Take the Opportunity. Emmanuel says, If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, is a liar. For how can anyone who does not love his brother, whom he can see, love God, who he, not, he cannot see? 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. Life is a process of the soul's growth towards the divine greatness. Make the best of the struggles and pro problems along the way in order to grow. Widening your circle of relationships and action. Let us learn in order to teach. Let us accumulate in order to help. Let us become greater in order to protect. Let us become educated in order to serve. By doing and giving something, the soul is always going further. By keeping a blessing to itself, the spirit often only adorns itself. But if it spreads its wealth around, it grows constantly. By serving others, it is incorporated in the chorus of the joy it causes. By teaching the student, it enjoys the benefits of the lesson. By being of service, it progresses and sanctifies itself in the beauty of individual and collective experience. By spreading wealth, healthy and lofty thoughts, it becomes a living fountain of blessing and happiness for everyone. By willing, willingly helping in the ministry of the good, it enjoys the overall prosperity. Therefore, give of yourself, of your strengths and resources, working constantly to implement new values, helping others for your own good. The world is a long, long road of evolution and growth, where ignorance and weakness travel along with you. Take this glorious opportunity for evolution that the physical sphere has come for to you and help those who come your way without thinking about any payment. Our neighbor is our point of contact with God. If you are seeking the Father, then help your brother and sister. Assist one another reciprocally because in the enlightening words of the evangelist, if anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, is a liar. For how can anyone who does not love his brother, whom he can see, love God, whom he cannot see? 
Did you hear this? Take the opportunity. Take the opportunity to come to the symposium because it doesn't come twice in the same year. It's only once a year. Yes, it is only once a year. And we've been together on this since day one in 2007. And I tell you, the spirits on the behind the scene are phenomenal. They're working day and night, night and day to bring this light to where the symposium is going to happen. And since we come from different states throughout the United States, they are using all of us to bridge this national enlightenment to the whole. Do I believe it? No, I am certain of it. Why? Because the good is good. Oh, yes. And he says here, by spreading healthy and lofty thoughts, we become a living fountain of blessing and happiness for everyone. Think about this. During a 24-hour day, how often do you think of the good? How often? How often do you think beautiful things? Most of the day we are afraid. Most of the day we are criticizing or criticizing ourselves. Most of our days we feel guilt. We feel lots of strange feelings. But it's time for us to grow above. Put mind over matter and let every thought and feeling change them. And say, why am I not going to park where I want? I need it. And say, of course. It makes sense that I'm going to find the parking. It makes sense that I'm going to find the solution to this problem. Because God wants the good to happen on the earth. It makes sense that I'll be able to meet this person. And talk to this person. And... Be at peace with this person because God wants so. So it's on each one of us to create with God, co-creating with God, this reality of the kingdom of God on earth. Tonight, we may be here at the comfort of our homes, not hearing noises of war, but we are in the same boat planet earth and war is happening somewhere else it is on us to create peace so i invite you now to pray with us to pray and i'm gonna play what we've been playing since day one of this countdown the ave maria asking that the forces of love on the earth really envelop all of us in all the efforts of every single worker, every single person who is coming to the sea to feel the beauty of these vibrations of love. And pray also to everyone who is here and to those who are far away and under the strikes of war. Shall we, friends? So let us pray. Dear Mother, Father God, we feel so small and yet so unique, precious. We thank you for this message from John, the evangelist, and the explanation by our dear Emmanuel through Chico Xavier, telling us about how important it is for us to spread the good inside and around of us. We pray tonight for the cause of peace on earth. We ask, dear God, when we love 
be so evident that it will make us refrain from throwing negative mental darts onto others and also throwing bombs, chemical weapons, creating fake news. Please forgive us on earth for we certainly don't know what we're doing. May the light of love be courageous to make itself present and spread all the more. We pray also for all those who are volunteering for the 12th U.S. Spirit Symposium, for the attendees, children, youth, and adults. We pray that all hearts of goodwill be blessed and be multiplied in the blessings by you. And the light may be spreading from the capital of the United States to the world. May we make new friends, dear God. May we restore old friendships and heal them. May the wounds of the past be left in the past. And true forgiveness come true. May we become true peacemakers. And work more diligently with you wherever we are. Please use us as your instruments to create new order on the earth, the order of love. May your loving messengers of the beyond find in each of our hearts a good willing heart. With your guidance, feeling your protection, and with your permission, we close these moments of reflection, prayer, clarifications, and illumination. And so be it. Thank you, friends. And don't forget, go to the spiritsymposium.org website. Make your registration. Pack your bags. Come on over because the time has come, friends. Since God sent Jesus to the earth, this will be the first time that there is a large effort together to bring the message of the Promise Consoler to the capital of all capitals in our world. May God bless us all. And until tomorrow, in another countdown for the 12th U.S. Spiritist Symposium. Thank you, friends.